I am the queen of procrastination. I'm serious, it's always been a talent of mine. To be honest, I think it runs in my family. I remember my grandfather twisting the famous Benjamin Franklin quote around to say, don't do today what you can put off until tomorrow. Hmm, doesn't quite have the same effect, does it? But I'm so guilty. And I've failed school and music exams, gotten into trouble at some jobs, let friends down just by avoiding actually doing the work I needed to get done, and then essentially just making myself very unhappy. So I just wanna share with you how I trick myself into being productive by fully embracing my shortcomings. If you have any more advice or have discovered techniques that work for you, then please share them in the comments below. I know I'm not alone. But yes, I've learned how to use procrastination to my advantage. Now I've done some research, although actually before I sat down to do it, I tidied my flat, cleaned up my studio, did some food preparation, went for a walk and stared at my phone for a hot second. But thanks to that research, I discovered that pigeons also suffer from procrastination. Fun fact, eh? They tend to choose a complex but delayed task rather than an easy but quick and achievable one. I never thought I'd say I'd had something in common with a pigeon, but turns out I do. Wow, do you see how bad it is? Also in this research, I learned that there is a divide between your present self and future self. Making plans and setting goals for my future self is something I really, really enjoy doing. <laughs> However, my present self actually needs to take the consistent action to see those plans come to fruition, which I often avoid. Although I know where I want to be in five or 50 years time, whether in business, health or musicianship, I also want immediate results. So I just uh, procrastinate. But then there's another problem because when the negative consequence of my inaction isn't immediately problematic or life-threatening, then I delay the habit change. That would mean I would benefit in future. I just end up delaying everything. It means my goal today will be the same in a year's time, but I'll just be a year older and also have spent another year on refining my habit of inaction, of not doing the thing. So it'll inevitably be harder to break out of. Motivation happens after you've already started. You need momentum. There are so many alluring things that are dangerous to humans and yet so addictive. I'm guilty of not caring about the effects on my future self, no matter how many goals I enjoy setting. I just can't think that far ahead. Instead, I have to be aware of my vices and really make it difficult for myself to do them too often. I have particularly noticed that I have to keep busy and get some sleep, otherwise boredom and tiredness creep in and I throw all my good habits out the window. With exercise, one thing I discovered recently is that it doesn't just affect your body, it actually affects your brain. Researchers at the University of British Columbia found that aerobic exercise boosts the size of your hippocampus the part of your brain that is involved in verbal memory and learning. It actually makes you smarter and really helps you figure out stuff and prioritize. Going for a walk to clear your head or hitting a punch bag, it all helps and yet I struggle to remember that every day. I'll stop feeling so anxious if I just get out and I'll be more proactive when I come back. Exercise is win-win and it doesn't have to be extreme. It just has to be something. I'm not cured, I'm not sure I ever will be, but at least I know what's happening. So basically, by putting in a workout, I actually invest in my future. Every cigarette you don't smoke, beer you don't drink, chocolate bar you don't eat can also be seen as an investment, let alone actually putting aside money for your pension in 40 years time or learning about the stock market. I really just want to bury my head sometimes in the sand and hide away, and yet I'll have no one to blame but myself in the long run. Same with work tasks. Every email I get done, video I make, hour of guitar practice or song I write can be seen as a benefit to my future self. We still need those vices every so often, otherwise life gets boring. But here are some more simple ways I've learnt to help myself. I write a big to-do list to get all my thoughts out of my brain and then prioritise what actually needs to be done today. I use to-do and a physical notepad. To do helps me remember recurring tasks automatically. Little things that I need to do every day, week or month, but then the physical notepad helps me with time management for the day in question and the big specific tasks I only need to do once. I create my own deadlines 
obviously I've been producing daily videos this month, but I've also started weekly guitar lessons in person on Zoom because firstly, I know I have a long way to go, but also because I always want to be improving, not stagnating. So knowing I need to show improvement each week holds me accountable. It's like exercising. If you're not consistently upping your reps or adding weight or running further, then you will just plateau. I've already wasted a few years by just playing and not practicing the instrument I love so much. And even Olympic athletes have full-time coaches. So why wouldn't I keep training and educating myself on an instrument that has infinite possibilities. Temptation bundling, which has been researched by Katie Milkman at the University of Pennsylvania, has really helped me too. When I want to listen to a good audiobook or podcast or have a phone call with a friend, I have to also get my 10,000 steps in. I need to go out and walk rather than sitting on the couch, or I need to tidy and do my washing up at the same time. Something that I'll avoid doing if I single it out, but something I won't notice when I'm having a good natter with a friend. I have people that hold me accountable and chase me for stuff. Also, now that I have people that work with me, I've discovered how I hate hearing excuses. I zone out while they're being made, yet all I used to make were excuses. I wonder how many of my bosses rolled their eyes at me on the phone. I don't need to know why you haven't done the work, I just want to know when it's done. Now I've seen it from the other side, I really try not to make excuses myself anymore. I've either done the thing or have not done it. Simple really. And the quicker I own up to it, the quicker I can get to work on it and less time is wasted for both parties. I set time limits per task, create a sense of urgency for myself. If I have a mammoth list of stuff I really need to get done, I put a realistic time limit next to each one and then crack on. If I don't finish it in the time set, I don't beat myself up, I move on and add it to tomorrow's list, just chipping away constantly. To finish, here are some questions I ask myself when I'm feeling the urge to procrastinate. Do I really want it? Or do I just think I should want to do it? Is someone else making me do it? What am I getting in return? Do I even care about that return? Am I trying to impress someone? Am I insecure about the results? If I try and make a video or write a song, am I going to be disappointed with myself or are other people going to hate it or say I'm terrible? Is it even worth it? What would the task look like if it were easy? How can I take the pressure away? When do I work best? Can I evaluate myself honestly? I'm a night owl, I like the quiet. I need it to be focused and not distracted. I work best to deadlines. So when is the deadline for? Make the bad habits difficult to do. I hide my phone and delete fun apps. I don't watch recent TV series or films on Netflix that often. I watch stuff that I'm not going to get addicted to and can turn off easily. When I really don't feel like doing something, Am I simply tired, hungry, or dehydrated? Have I moved today? We're just humans, we're pretty basic with our needs, but they're also pretty easy to forget. Procrastinate against procrastination. Put off putting something off. That anxiety you feel by delaying the action that needs to be taken is way worse than actually getting the thing done. Crack your own code and start to know exactly how you work best and go all in on it. Don't be ashamed of working until 2 a.m. when everyone tells you you should be up working out at 5 a.m. to make the most of the day. We still all have the same amount of hours, but we all have different ways of taking advantage of that time. I made this video for my future self to rewatch and hold myself accountable when I feel like I'm slipping and getting out of control because I know I'll be here again at some point, but I'll notice and course correct just that much quicker. Oh yeah, and I need to stop avoiding releasing a new record. So I'm gonna start chipping away at that too. I hope this video helps you, but now it's time for Patreon of the day. Okay, who is it gonna be today? Generate. Chris Tigerson, you are my Patreon of the day. Thank you so much for your support. To everyone else, I can't wait to see what tips and tricks you've learned about yourself in the comments below. Please subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, but otherwise, I'll be seeing you very soon. <laughs>